Hello, Daffy here with a very interesting video for you, especially at this time of the year with New Year's coming up. If you have a wanderlust and a love of vintage wines, then perhaps you will be interested in listening to this video. Destinations worldwide where delicious wines are produced. We're going to start off in Saint Emilion, France. If you are a lover of full-bodied red wines, as we are, then Saint Emilion is for you. Must admit this was our favorite vineyard in Bordeaux. The town is one of the most historic in the entire region. Our favorite vineyard, Lake Cordeliers, a winery in the ruins of a 14th century monastery, was absolutely fascinating. It's a beautiful building. One of the one of this winery's specialties is producing the sparkling Cremant de Bordeaux wine for over a century. While inside, visitors can walk down to underground caves to view the age-old preparation of this famous Cremant de Bordeaux sparkling wine. Best time to visit this winery is in the spring. Okay, moving on to the United States and to Napa Valley, California. There are so many great wineries in Napa Valley that it's almost impossible to pick out the top ones. From our experience, we have enjoyed some of the lesser known wineries such as Nichols, Con Creek, and Trefethen, all offer tastings and information on their winemaking. The picturesque landscape of rows and rows of grapevines all over the Napa countryside are such well, they're very impressive, very impressive images. Of course, Napa Valley is also known for having many great restaurants where local restaurant tours will educate you on the different Napa Valley wine choices. Our trips to Napa have been in the spring and the fall. The experts recommend the latter part of August through October is the best time to visit this amazing wine growing region. Okay, so now we're going back to Europe, and this has to be one of my absolute favorites Multibocciano, Italy. How we love visiting this charming medieval southern Tuscany town. Famous, the famous red wine grape is grown here. You guessed it, it's called Multibocciano. The grape is used in the production of red wines, appreciated internationally for its subtle flavors. Delicious is all I can say about that wine. Oh, my goodness, is it good. By far, my husband is my and my favorite Italian wine. Yet there is a caveat. There are many, many other very delicious Italian wines. Chianti, Chianti Classico is yummy. San Giovese and Brunello di Montalcino are among some other favorites of ours. As far as the time of year we have visited in the summer and in the autumn, autumn is better because the village of Montepulciano is not quite as crowded with tourists. Going a little further, I guess you'd say west in Europe, we go to Douro, Valley, Portugal. The wine estate is a, is a scenic one. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Quintas is a stunningly beautiful vineyard dating back to the 18th century. It was way back in the Roman times when vines were introduced here in the 3rd century AD. One of the most popular wines produced is the popular Vinho Verde, white wine. There are a number of tours offered, as well as a wine cruise, so you can see these vineyards from the water. The best time to travel to the vineyards is from late September to early October. All right, the next one is an absolute favorite of mine. Franschhoek, South Africa. I had no idea how delicious the South African wines were until we visited there on a couple of different occasions. They are 
literally outstanding. The countryside in, in this wine-growing country is outside Cape Town. It's both beautiful and picturesque. From personal experience, I can say without a doubt, I was so impressed with the beauty of the region and the lots of choices in all the different wines. This picturesque village of Franz Schoke, located in a place known as the Cape Vinelands, was founded long ago by the French Huguenots in 1868. This area is known for delicious full-body reds like Pinot Noir and Shiraz. Our favorite was Pinot Noir. In addition, their range of wines include whites such as Chardonnay and Semillon. There are a number of popular food and wine tours offered all over the wine country outside of Cape Town. They're amazing. Um, great restaurants, too. Oh, gosh, the restaurants are fabulous. All fresh food, most of it grown locally, and, of course, the wines that are grown and made right there. Best time to visit is in September to February. We were there in February. The weather was absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, we took a whole bunch of these amazingly delicious wines. Well, actually, we didn't take them with us. We sent them home to the United States. Now we're going to go to Mexico, Val de Guadalupe. Who would have known that Mexico has a booming wine region? If you like reds such as Cabernet, Sauvignon, Merlot, or Zinfandel, or whites like Colombard and Chardonnay, then there are plenty of wineries to choose from. A few recommended ones are Decantost, Vina Cola, Vina Cava, and Costa de Vinos. A really good time to visit is late August or early September, when the Fiesta de la Vendemina, an annual harvest festival, is held. This is when you will witness the blessing of the grapes, wine tasting, dancing, and generally a fun time is had at that time of year for every visitor. Our next stop is down under, South Australia. If you like a bold Shiraz, then check out Barossa Valley. This bold flavored wine is often found on the menus of famous Michelin restaurants. Southern Australia has become, become known for its focus on natural wines. Many regional vintners are shifting towards organic veritals. No matter what your wine preference, South Australia, Australia's beautiful vineyards are definitely worth a tour in the months of February and March. Okay, so that takes us to several vineyards around the world, and there, there are many more, um, but these are some that I've highlighted because they happen to be my favorites, so I wanted to share them with you. But there's some other interesting information that I guess you would rack up to being in the trivia department, and that is a recent survey, according to, I should say, a recent survey, France gets the most votes for the best wine produced as the best wine-producing country in the world. My vote probably would have been for Italy. What is yours? In a recent survey, the most wine-guzzling countries are, in this order, Portugal, France, and Italy. Well, that's a surprise in Europe. I mean, I should say Portugal was a surprise as the most wine-guzzling town. There you have it, a trip around the world to visit some famous vineyards, recommended for those of us who enjoy a sip of wine or two. Now, how about joining me on my Facebook group, Second Half Travel Adventures? It is so much fun to explore interesting places like these vineyards all over the world. And if you like having watched this particular presentation on worldwide sources of wine growers and wine types, please, subs please subscribe to this, my YouTube channel, the Daphne Dunlap channel. I will look forward to presenting 
many more quality presentations to you, hopefully with an interesting twist that will be enjoyed. Here's to all of you, a toast to everybody who enjoys an occasional glass of wine.